Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. As you probably know, the Russians <clears throat> fled, retreated, withdrawn from Kherson. They went over the Advitvka bridge, or at least the bridge was damaged before by the Ukrainians, and they blew it up. The bridge is no more. Not an entire bridge, but you can't... Uh, I mean, in order to cross it, you probably need about two years of repairs or rebuilding the entire bridge altogether. The Russians also blew up their barges that used to go between the left bank to the right bank. So the Ukrainians will not be able to follow them, to speak with them. In the meantime, it seems the Ukrainian army or forces entered Kherson and uh, the Russians are there no more. I um, read a few articles, one stating that, hey, actually not all the Russian troops uh, left Kherson. There are some uh, parts of Kherson that have Russian troops over there. I strongly doubt that. Uh, why? Because you don't blow your bridges behind you and you uh, remain a city. <laughs> no, what, what's the point? So I don't think that's the case. That's the one. The other one is um, supposedly the Ukrainian army is already in Kherson city. So let's see what these guys are reporting. Uh, this article comes from Ukrainska Pravda from uh, 11th of November 2022. Ukrainian defense forces already in Kherson. Videos of Ukrainian soldiers entering Kherson on the afternoon of November 11th have appeared on social media. A Ukrainian flag is already flying over the building of the main police department. The video clearly shows a civilian in plain clothes assisting a soldier in attaching and raising a yellow and blue flag over the main police headquarters in Kherson Oblast. The facade of the building, the bars on its windows and a ramp to the right of its entrance indicate that this is the main police precinct on 4 Lut Luteranska Street in the southeastern outskirts of Kherson. Southeastern, that means they are by the Dnieper River. And they show here a little uh, dot and it shows by the Dnieper River and uh, not by the Advivka, uh, <laughs> by the bridge Antonivka, Advivka, Antonivka. On November 11th, residents of Kherson went out in the streets with Ukrainian flags, waiting for the armed forces of Ukraine to enter the city. Well, if I remember, uh, they uh, waited in the same way for the Wehrmacht. Remember the Wehrmacht, the bad dudes mm, dressed in uh, Hugo Boss clothes? Yeah, those guys. When they entered uh, Ukrainian cities, a lot of Ukrainians uh, encountered them with flowers and kisses and hugs because they took, uh, you know, they liberated, that's how they saw it, from the uh, kosher leadership of uh, Soviet Union at that time and the commissars and all that. So <clears throat> a lot of crimes occurred after that, before that, during that. And anyway, I'm not going to get into that because that's how it is. You know, you have your upper hand right now. I try to survive. Once I have the upper hand, I'm going to you up. Basically, that's how we humans function. Uh, love and happiness and understanding that's in the, I don't know, uh, Snow White and the uh, 12 dwarves. dwarfs. <laughs> in the meantime, they got some neighbors over. <laughs> Double the number. Anyway, um, this is the uh, what, what's going on in Kherson. Uh, th there's no Russian traps. Uh, traps. Yeah, that too. Uh, troops in, uh, in Kherson. Now, the Ukrainians claim that before the Russians left Kherson, they mined the whole city. It's a dead death trap. So uh, that's uh, what the Ukrainians are saying. I don't know if that's true. Uh, according to the Ukrainians, the Russians blew up some um, uh, power stations, water stations, uh, as criminal as they are. You know that. Uh, we are in, um, that. That goes without saying. Now they ran after the over the over the bridge or whenever they wherever however they crossed the Dnieper River blew everything up because that's what they do. But when the Ukrainians blew up the the bridge, it was a okay. But when these guys are doing the same thing, it's not okay anymore. 
which is not okay in any way, but uh, in a war, you do what you do. Now, strange enough, we have uh, this guy who uh, made me reassess my, uh, I don't want to say opinion on him, and that is Dmitry Medvedev, the former president uh, of Russia, Russian Federation. He made a sta statement, I read an article, just came through, and it was kind of like, what the hell are you talking about? He, who is very feisty, uh, I, we came to find out since the invasion, he stated that, uh, hey, don't worry, we're, don't worry, everybody, in a statement that we're going to get Kherson back. Really? Hmm, okay, why did you leave in the first place? <laughs> well, it's a promise. I hate, I hate. I don't like, uh, how should I put it, this wishful thinking. Sometimes it helps psychologically. But then I think the, 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 the mental fallout, when you realize that's not going to happen, it doubles in intensity. So that means, you know, we're going to take it back, we're going to take it back. And after about three months, you realize that actually those guys cross the river and they push you further east. Then, you know, the, 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 the brain is like, oh, really? Not only that we're not going to get that back and you are just talking shit, but now we're all even getting worse. So that's why uh, this kind of wishful thinking and this kind of statements, they help sometimes, but you have to back them up. Otherwise, even the weasels can uh, notice a pattern in what you say and what uh, actually occurs in the territory. So that's uh, Dmitry Medvedev. I'm pretty sure they want to take that back, but they didn't. The problem with that little thing was they, the Russian army or the troops or whomever those guys are, because we don't know exactly who they are, they did not, uh, were not able to go further west. So they, it was just, you know, the bridgehead. That's all what it was over there. They didn't go, I don't know, uh, 100 miles or kilometers, let's say, uh, westward. They didn't do that. They, they were just over there, confined to that area. They didn't go to all the troops, boom, cross the, the Dnieper River and uh, going over there. So that little thing over there was not um, sustainable, it seems like. I don't know if it was not sustainable because of the uh, Ukrainian attacks or and because of lack of supplies. Remember, the bridge was blown up. These guys were using, the Russians were using barges to bring anything that would come from the other side as, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing food, fuel and other necessities. So it didn't make sense to them to keep it over there and uh, being trapped on that little uh, corner around the Dnieper River by Kherson uh, city or in Kherson city. So um, they know better what's going on and they moved over and they wait for uh, the winter to pass, being supplied more, much more easier being on the west, the east bank of uh, the Dnieper River. So the Ukrainians are in Kherson, good for them. Uh, some Ukrainians are applauding that, they wait for them with flags, I'm, I'm pretty sure that occurs uh, because you can't have 100% uh, either way, I mean, anyway. Well, we'll see, isn't Kherson part of uh, Russia now? <laughs> I just wonder, Is, wasn't it voted, yes, no, yes? So how come, uh, eh, we'll find out. Well, remember, the United States has doubt that uh, uh, anything will happen, anything else will happen over the winter. In, with the front, it's going to be like right now everybody goes home and goes celebrates Christmas and New Year's and then come back and uh, you know, get it on again. <laughs> or whatever, if they uh, decide to um, negotiate, which I don't see why, because it's like, you know, it's like uh, half of the movie. You have 10 minutes break right now and you see what's going to be next. I don't think this is going to be the end of the movie because the Ukrainians are not happy with this, the Russians are not happy with this, the Americans are definitely not happy, and uh, the military industrial complex will need more money. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just. <laughs>